Hi guys. So today we are going to start our last unit of trig uh, before we move on to some different topics. Uh, so if you are just looking at this for the first time, the biggest thing you're going to want to do first is review your unit circle. You really need to know your unit circle in order to be able to do what we're doing today. Um, so what we're going to do today is we're going to find inverse values. Um, so it's going to be very similar to what we did when we found those trig values in the unit circle, but the inverse. So if you remember, an inverse is when you switch x and y. That's how you find an inverse. Uh, it's a different relationship. Um, we have used inverse most often in this class with our trig functions. Uh, we use inverse trig functions to find angles. The answer to an inverse trig is an angle. All right, the way you typed it in your calculator is we did shift sign. It was a little negative one. That's inverse. And then just review for your unit circle. Remember that the x coordinate is cosine. The y coordinate is sine. Y divided by x is tangent. The reciprocal of cosine is secant. The reciprocal of sine is cosecant. And x divided by y is cotangent. All right, so if you know your unit circle, today will not be too terrible. Because what we're going to do is basically we're going backwards, okay? Sine inverse of one half means the sine of what angle is one half. So sine is the y coordinate. So you're going to find where there's a y coordinate of one half on your unit circle. Well, this is going to occur in two places. Sine is positive in quadrant one and sine is positive in quadrant two. So in quadrant one, you're going to find that y coordinate of one half at pi over six. You're also going to find that y coordinate of one half in quadrant two at five pi over six. All right, if you look at B, B is actually the exact same question. That is just some new notation and a different way of writing this. Arc sine means sine inverse. Now, why, why that's a thing, I actually don't know. Um, I think maybe it's for formatting because you don't have to use like a little superscript to make the exponent. I don't know. But if you see arc, it means inverse. Okay. Now, remember, it does not mean reciprocal. Inverse and reciprocal are different. Inverse means find the angle. Reciprocal are your, like your secant, cosecant, cotangent functions. So this means sine inverse of one half. This is the exact same question we just did. 5 or 6 and 5, 5 or 6. All right, question C means the same thing. Because in order to get x by itself, we don't divide by sine. x is a part of sine right now. So the only way to get that x by itself is to do sine inverse of 1 half. And again, we've already found sine inverse of 1 half. That was pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6. So those are all three different notations for the exact same style question. All right, let's do a couple more. Again, if you know your unit circle, this won't be that bad. So cosine, cosine is the x-coordinate. You're trying to find what angle or what radian value gives you an x-coordinate of negative root 3 over 2. Well, cosine is negative in quadrant 2 and quadrant 3. The x-coordinate is root 3 over 2 at 5 pi over 6 and 7 pi over 6. All right, arc tan. So that's tan inverse. What angle is going to give you a y divided by x of 1? Well, if y divided by x is 1, y and x are the same thing. That happens at pi over 4 with root 2 over 2 comma root 2 over 2. So tangent is positive in quadrant 1 and quadrant 3. So if you want to remember that little acronym, it's all smarties take calculus. That tells you which trig function is positive. They're all positive in 1 tan is positive in 3. So in quadrant 1, it's pi over 4. In quadrant 3, it's 5 pi over 4. All right, let's find the next one. Sine x equals y. So we're doing inverse here. Sine inverse of 0. What angle will give us an x, or sorry, a y coordinate of 0? So look at your unit circle. There's going to be two places where this happens. 0 and pi. All right, secant inverse of 1 half. So secant is 1 divided by x. Okay, so we're looking for where 1 divided by x is equal to 2. And the easiest way to write this is just when the x coordinate is 1 half. Okay, 1 divided by that value. We're flipping it. When you flip 2, it's 1 half. So when x is 1 half, check your unit circle. That's going to happen in quadrants 1 and quadrant 4. And then it happens at pi over 3 and 5 pi over 3. 
All right, arc cosecant. Again, that means inverse. Cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. And 1 divided by 1 is still 1. So we're doing sine inverse of 1. That's the y-coordinate. So find when the y-coordinate is 1 on your unit circle. That only happens at one place, pi over 2. All right, next one's a little trickier. Um, tan inverse of negative root 3. Okay, so we can figure out which quadrant. Tangent is negative in 2 and 4. But we have to figure out which y divided by x is going to give us root 3. Now, if I were you guys, what I think makes this a little bit easier, when you learn your unit circle, okay, here's your pi over 6. You guys know at this point that's root 3 over 2, comma, 1 half. You guys know this is root 2 over 2, root 2 over 2. And you know this is 1 half, comma, root 3 over 2. Okay, that's your x and your y's. At this point, it might be faster if you also just go ahead and write down what tangent is. That way you can just have one more thing to remember. It makes it a little bit easier. You don't have to divide every single time to see what it's going to be. Um, so if you decide to do that, um, the way it would work out, this is going to be root 3 over 3. This is 1, and this is root 3. Okay, again, where that comes from, it's y divided by x. So if I do 1 half divided by root 3 over 2, I flip the second, then I rationalize, and that's how I get this value. So if you just kind of get in the habit of remembering it, it might make these a little bit faster. Now again, you can always divide to find it. Um, but at this point, hopefully you know the unit circle pretty well. Adding in that one extra th thing might not be that hard. Okay, so again, we're looking for root 3. Well, that happens at pi over 3, but again, it's in quadrant. We need it to be negative, so that's going to be in quadrant 2 and quadrant 4. So your two answers here are 2 pi over 3 and 5 pi over 3. All right, so now, if this slide changes, we're going to have some different directions, but our work really is not going to change. What this says is to find all of the possible values for x, so every single possible value that there is. It may sound difficult, but it's actually really easy. It's the exact same thing we're just doing with one small extra step. All right, cosine inverse of root 3 over 2. Um, that is saying find the x-coordinate of root 3 over 2 on your circle. Well, the x-coordinate would be a positive here and here. So root 3 over 2 as an x-coordinate is going to be at pi over 6, and it's also going to be at 11 pi over 6. But it says to find all of these values, not just that one circle of the unit circle. Well, the way we find that, if you remember, we talked at the beginning of this year about coterminal angles. Coterminal angles mean you could add or subtract 2 pi. You can add or subtract a full circle um, as many times as you want to, and you're still going to get the same answer. So all we have to do is consider the fact that we can add a full circle. So I'm going to write plus 2 pi n because I could add or subtract 2 pi as many times as I want to to either of those angles, and those would all be angles that could work. The cosine of any of those angles would give me root 3 over 2. So it's the same thing we were just doing, but you put plus pi or n at the end. All right, try the next one. Arc sine, so sine inverse, negative root 2 over 2. So sine is negative in quadrants 3 and 4. That's going to be at uh, 5 pi over 4 and 7 pi over 4. And again, let me write it this way. We're finding all of the answers, so we're going to add plus 2 pi in. All right, tangent uh, is 0. So y divided by x is going to equal 0. Well, 0 divided by anything is 0. That means we're looking for a y-coordinate of 0. That happens when sine is 0 at 0 and pi. So 0 plus 2 pi n, pi plus 2 pi n. Now you may see there's actually a shorter way and a more concise way to write this answer. This is fine. This is a little bit easier. But if you think about it, in order to get to each of those things every time, all you have to add is a single pi. So the simplest way to write this answer actually is pi n. Uh, now if you don't see that, that's okay. You can just kind of keep it like this because that shows you at least understand what we're doing here. 
Okay, so now we're going to look at something a little bit more specific. Um, and what we're really going to see is why we shouldn't use our calculator for these values. Um, so we're going to go ahead and graph the inverse function. Okay, so if you remember the way we graph an inverse, we switch x and y. So I'm going to list a few of the x's and y's that are on this graph. This is the sine function. So I've got negative pi over 2, negative 1 is a point, 0, 0 is a point, pi over 2, 1 is a point, pi 0 is a point. There's a lot more, but that's just a few of them. So if I want to graph the inverse, I'm going to switch x and y. So negative 1, negative pi over 2, 0, 0, 1, pi over 2, 0, pi, and this could keep going with many, many more points. The problem here, if I try and graph these points, negative 1, negative pi over 2 is here, 0, 0 is here, 1 pi over 2 is here. If I go and graph 0 comma pi, that would be somewhere up here. Okay, if I graph a few more of these points, what would happen, this graph is going to look something like that. Now the problem with that graph is that it's not a function. So if you remember with a function, you do the vertical line test, this graph passes through more than one value, so it does not pass the vertical line test. What this means is it's not actually a function, unless we only look at a section of this graph. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to look at only a section of this graph to where the y's don't, or sorry, the x's don't repeat. So that little section of my graph right there is the biggest part of this I can get without any repeating values. So what we're going to do is write the domain and range here. Okay, the domain of this is from negative 1 to 1. The range of this is from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. All right, now let's look at cosine. So original graph, let's see, we've got negative pi over 2, 0. We've got 0, 1. Pi over 2, 0. Pi, negative 1. 3 pi over 2, comma, 0. So on the inverse, we're going to switch those. So flip our x's and y's. But again, not all of these points are going to work because we need this to be a function. So if I graph a few of these, okay, over to 0, down to negative pi over 2. 1, 0. 0 pi over 2, negative 1 pi, and then you'll notice, again, after that point, this graph is it's not a very good line. This graph is not going to be a function after this point. So that's the only part of the graph that we can actually draw so that we have a function. So the domain of this is negative 1 to 1. The range of this graph, in order for it to be a function, is from 0 to pi. So what all of this actually does for us, um, this is going to kind of explain the reason why if you plug these inverses into your calculator, you're only going to get one answer. Now, if you notice back then when we did the very beginning, there's a lot more than just one answer. The calculator is only going to give you the inverse value that falls in that restricted range. Um, so that one specific answer that the calculator gives you, that is the principal inverse value. It's the one that falls within your restricted range. Um, so the way it works, we pick a specific quadrant in order to be able to find this, this inverse value. So for all of our functions, if we're doing the inverse of a positive, we're going to write our answer in quadrant 1. But if we're doing the inverse of a negative value, we're only going to find the one that's within the restricted range. So for three of those functions, that restricted range is going to be in quadrant 4, and we write the negative answer. So for example, if I wanted to do sine inverse of negative 1 half, Okay, if I find just the value on the unit circle, okay, the unit circle would tell me that there's two places where this happens. Uh, this happens at 7 pi over 6 and 11 pi over 6. But neither of those answers is within that restricted range. So the answer I would actually use instead is negative pi over 6. And that's the negative angle. It's the one that falls within your restricted range. That's what we'll do for sine, for cosecant, and for tangent if we're finding a principal value. Now, we're going to focus a little bit more on the values between 0 and 2 pi, the ones that are on your unit circle. So we're not going to use this a lot. But really, I want you guys to understand this kind of explains why the calculator only gives you that one answer. All right, the other three trig functions, so cosine, secant, and cotangent, that has a restricted range of 0 to pi. So if the answer is negative for that one, like if I'm doing cosine inverse of negative 1 half, okay, that happens in two places, quadrant 2 and quadrant 3. 
So the two possible answers there um, would be, let's see, one half. So we've got pi over two pi over three and four pi over three. Four pi over three is not in that restricted range. We use the one that's in quadrant two, which is two pi over three. So that's the principal value. That's the one the calculator would tell you. All right, so the last thing we're going to do is we're going to actually um, find what are called some compositions, okay? These are some questions within questions. And what these are really good about is helping you guys understand the difference between an inverse and just a regular, finding a regular trig value. So for example here, okay, remember we start with the inside most parentheses, sine of pi over 3. Okay, the sine of pi over 3, that's something you guys did last semester, the beginning of this semester. Find pi over 3 in your unit circle, write the y coordinate. So the answer to that question, the sine of pi over 3, the y coordinate there, is root 3 over 2. Well, now we have a new question, cosine inverse of root 3 over 2. So at what angle will cosine give us root 3 over 2? Okay, so where is the x coordinate root 3 over 2? Since we're doing principal, we're just going to find that one answer. And that one answer is going to occur at pi over 6. All right, let's try another one that's the same idea but backwards. We're going to start with sine inverse of root 2 over 2. So the y coordinate is root 2 over 2. <coughs> well, that happens at pi over 4. Well, now let's find the cosine of pi over 4. The cosine of pi over 4, that's the x coordinate there. That's root 2 over 2. All right, let's look at another one. Now, this one's a little bit different because this is not on my circle anywhere. We actually don't need the unit circle to solve this question. Cosine inverse of root of, sorry, cosine inverse of three-fifths. The answer to that is an angle. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw a random triangle with a random angle. And we actually did some questions like this at the end of last semester. The cosine of that angle is three-fifths. That means the adjacent over the hypotenuse is three over five. Well, if I do Pythagorean theorem, that missing side then is four. So the answer to all of this inside stuff is just that theta that I drew. So now I'm finding the tangent of theta. Well, based off this picture, we never need to know what theta is. I just need to find the tangent of it. So the opposite over adjacent on that picture is 4 thirds. Okay, now this next one a little bit tricky. Start with the inside. There's no inverses here, and that's okay. Let's just make sure we read each question. It's very, we'll be very specific on it. So the sine of pi. The sine of pi, what's the y-coordinate at the angle pi? When you go to pi, the y-coordinate is 0. So that becomes 0. Well, now we're doing the cosine of 0. So go to the radian value of 0, the angle of 0, and find the x-coordinate. The x-coordinate at 0 is 1. All right, this next one's another one where we can draw a triangle here. Cosecant inverse. Cosecant's the reciprocal of sine, hypotenuse over opposite. But on this one, let's say I draw this picture. I want a hypotenuse and an opposite. Is that possible? Can we have a triangle with a hypotenuse of 4 and an opposite of 7? Okay, no, we can't actually do that. That's not actually possible. So what that means here, there's no solution. We can't do this. If you did it on a calculator, you would get an error. All right, last one, cosine inverse of 2 pi. So again, this is why it's important to understand what these questions are asking. Cosine inverse means at what angle will the x-coordinate be 2 pi? We never have an x-coordinate of 2 pi. Or if we try and do it like the previous and we try and draw a triangle, that would be an adjacent over a hypotenuse, which again, 2 pi is bigger than 1. That doesn't work. This is not possible. You cannot do cosine inverse of 2 pi. All right, so that is it for today, guys. So the biggest thing I want you guys to focus on is really that first section that we did, finding those values on the unit circle. Uh, if you have, don't remember unit circle, make sure you spend some time reviewing it. It's going to be really helpful uh, to help you guys just get ready for the stuff we're going to be doing after spring break.